My friends, hope you guys are having a good weekend. Wanted to jump in here real quick and uh, make a pretty uh, relatively quick video uh, about what I tweeted out uh, yesterday evening. And basically it was this picture right here where I said, uh, once all this converges, something is going to happen. And so I, I know that was a little cryptic. And so uh, what I wanted to do is make a video kind of explaining my thought process on it. So uh, first things first, uh, once again, AMC right now is currently trading in a, a falling wedge or a descending wedge. And so uh, Dave did a great video on kind of breaking it down uh, a little bit more. I'm gonna keep my video uh, relatively short. Like I said, just kind of explaining where I think uh, we might be headed uh, this week. So um, where I've created my pendant from is going to be uh, right here from these uh, three touches after the uh, January collapse where they removed the buy button. Um, then we had three solid touches. Um, this has been going to be the line that I've been tracking pretty much the entire time. And you can see, even if you go back in August, it provided uh, support for almost a month, month and a half. Uh, back here in August, so I had a peak up before before it broke down underneath it, and then it was also trading right around it, even back here right at the start of COVID. So, uh, anyway, after the buy button collapse happened and it really started getting back into its quote unquote normal trading ranges again, you know there was three solid touches here before the run in June. Um, so that's just kind of what I've been tracking the entire time. Um, and then, of course, from the all-time highs and, you know, where I uh, pointed out the inverse head and shoulders that unfortunately didn't uh, come to fruition. We kind of spilled out over and down off of that. Um, but now we're in kind of this uh, descending wedge. So when you look at simple ways of trading a, a falling wedge or a descending wedge, basically um, a, you've got lower highs the entire time and you got lower lows the entire time. And it bounces around in that trading range until you kind of start breaking up and above it. And then it's suggested when it actually closes above that falling wedge, you know, that that's essentially where you want to, you know, buy. Um, and then essentially once you get back to the top of the following wedge, that's where you would be taking profit if you were doing it on a more, you know, normal stock. And I'm telling you right now, there's going to be people that are following, um, you know, this falling wedge right here. And once we get back up here to the top, even up here to the 30 and then definitely back up here to the 43, there's going to be people who, uh, you know, take profits in this stock. Not everybody who buys into this stock is a buy and hold ape or anything along those lines. So um, you just got to be ready for that. And that's going to be why I think we'll probably stop up here, you know, in this 30 for a little bit. And we'll definitely stop up here in this 40 for a little bit. Unless something crazy happens, you know, with the options change or a bunch of institutions flipping over or anything like that, you know, we may not see just that straight moonshot. Obviously, man, I'm, I'm all for a straight moonshot, but um, I, th I think we're going to see, you know, kind of a grind up out of here sort of as of right now. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> if you get a little bit closer here into this wedge, and I'm actually going to go back um, to the regular candles here. So, you know... On our, on our daily candle, you know, we had a decent, you know, we had a volume here that was at, at least higher than than average, you know, kind of, we were like at 50 million, I believe, uh, you know, almost, so 56, basically 57 million, um, you know, which had been higher than a lot of, you know, previous days. And, and if you look back here, I mean, definitely the, the tallest and the biggest bars right here are always going to be the green bars, but once again, uh, helps our OBV case. But um, so basically what I'm looking for here, you know, is we're going to want to see a creep up out of, you know, breaking out of here, which is going to be around that... Uh, it's not too high, you know, that $21, $50, $22 range is going to be where we really start breaking towards the upside. Now, from where I have this drawn, though, as you can see, we can pretty much trade in this range all the way down um, up until January 26, which would be all the way, let me double check my dates here, I think that's through... Um, yeah, yeah, that would be all the way till about middle of not this upcoming week, but the following week after that. So we have, uh, remember guys, the market's closed on Monday. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trading days that we could trade um, in this falling wedge right here. 
And I think with the way that the option chain looks, you know, there's a lot of people that are kind of bullish going into this next week. And I, I definitely see it as a possibility. Um, but I think what's more of a possibility is with the way these options are working right now is we kind of ping pong around in, in this wedge and trade relatively flat, if not see a, a little bit of downside this week. I wouldn't be surprised at all to come all the way down here, uh, touch this line at about that 1850 mark, uh, and then see a real good solid positive uh, push back up. Now, uh, once again, if, if you want to see the much more bullish uh, version, you, once again, go watch Dave's video. Um, Booksy also talks about some fractals where, you know, we might spring right up out of here. And, and I agree with all of those guys. I just think with the option chain, unless, you know, the whales and the institutions and the hedge funds, unless they want to weaponize that option chain, I think we're going to trade pretty flat, if not see a little bit of downside this week. I mean, Every dollar, you know, once again, feel free to go look at the option chain. Every dollar that moves up in AMC price right now is a massive amount of shares that all of a sudden become in the money um, that, you know, the market makers are going to have to hedge for. So I would be surprised to see big movement this week. Now, obviously, I'm all for it. But I would be surprised to see it. I, I think relatively flat to a little bit of downside is my most likely. Uh, my most bearish case is going to be getting that gap fill, um, which like I've said before in other videos, you know, if we even start coming down here towards this, you know, if we even get close to the range of the gap fill, I just assume let's go gap fill and get, and get it over with. Um, if you look at the fibs, which once again, you know, I'm a big believer in the, the Fibonacci numbers. Um, and using those retracements. So if you do it, uh, the one that we've tracked the most uh, from right here where we go from you know the bottom of the June run to the top of the June run, you know that 0.786, you know that gets into that 17 range. So if you know we got down here and even wick below that day, you know and then basically catapulted from here, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and then, of course, you've got the ones from the bottom of the buy button collapse, which, you know, like I said, we're pretty much right there. That was what originally gave me the price target, the, the 0.5 on the Friday of the 1950, where I think we came down to like 1951. Um, so, like I said, I missed that one by a penny. But um, I, I think trading relatively flat right here is, is going to be in kind of ping-ponging around in here doing something kind of like this where you kind of go up and then you go down and then maybe this is where you break up and then you retest and then you start coming back up you know something like that you know that type of move at all you know wouldn't surprise me at all but I, I just think you know seeing that kind of move uh, this week with the way the options looking my personal opinion is that's going to be the more unlikely move so I'm thinking relatively flat uh, to maybe even a little bit of downside. So maybe get that usual, you know, pop on Monday up to that 21 and everybody starts freaking out. Oh, we, we're going to go. We're going to go. They're going to, you know, the options are coming in the money. And then we get dragged down the rest of the week. I think that's most likely scenario. And then I think the following week is when we might start seeing some real positive price action. But um, anyway, just kind of want to explain what I tweeted out uh, last night. So uh, enjoy your weekend, guys. And once again, markets closed on Monday. So We'll see what happens on Tuesday. I mean, I'm excited either way. I'm going to be buying either way. So um, once again, lots of cool things coming along. See you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, y'all. Be safe.